Hi, everybody. Adam Phillips here for Dynamite Entertainment. We're here today with Luke Lieberman and Ryan Silbert, two of the co-writers on the upcoming graphic novel, Stan Lee's Alliances, Orphans. And before we get into that real quick, please, if you're watching at home, hit the like and subscribe buttons. And that way we know you liked it. And also when you subscribe, you will be sure to catch all the upcoming content from Dynamite on our YouTube page. So guys, welcome. Thanks for jumping in on this. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited at Dynamite to have the opportunity to publish the um, Orphans graphic novel. This is, you know, your first foray into the graphic novel format with the Alliance's world. Can you kind of tell our viewers um, the basics of what Alliances is all about so they sort of know where the starting point is? This has been developing for uh, many years. I, I initially met Stan in the year 2000, and then I came out and worked for him. Um, and then I went my own way and, and worked on the Red Sonja comics and whatnot, and then circled back around with him. And he was always a mentor. And when I first met Stan, he saw the internet as just having huge potential to connect communities, to put an end to tribalism, for, for people to share ideas. And, you know, if you cut to about 15 years later, he became much more sort of aware of how the internet was not living up to that potential and how it was actually creating these kind of bubbles and it was insulating our, uh, us from one another. And, you know, people were saying things behind the facade of anonymity that they would never say to each other. That was the impetus, the, the idea that we needed to get back to human connection uh, was the impetus for the original series of stories, which was Trick of Light and New Reality. And there was always the dream that we would then take those kind of street level stories and blow them up in space and create a more kind of cosmic framing for the story. So that's, that's what Orphans is. You don't really need to have read Trick of Light or uh, New Reality, which are both Audible originals, and you're welcome to, to check them out at Audible. We'd love if you did. But you can it's really a, a new jumping off point we're following one of the main characters uh particularly from new reality as he launches off into space and we sort of meet him there um and then there's another connective tissue in that the prologue which we co-wrote with stan and which bill did the art on which was really kind of a dream uh to have uh bill involved that story is really kind of the genesis of the entire universe it's you know we're introducing the inventor and mia his greatest invention which are both central characters to the first story a trick of light that was done at audible and we're sort of showing the origin story of those characters and because those characters came from outer space we're kind of kind of connecting those two points because we're going back to kind of where it all began with those two characters and our character william who was the main character in a new reality is venturing into space to try to figure out where his abilities came from. And obviously it's all sort of connected and it's all the same place. The, the Alliance is, is a universe that's um, like Luke was mentioning, it's built off of the fabric of early Marvel storytelling, which is, you know, what Stan is best known for, but it's also kind of predates that a little bit with all of his science fiction interests. So, you know, Alliances as a whole, if I was going to say what the universe was about, you know, it's really exploring the questions of science, the miracles of science, technological innovation. And as Luke mentioned, the prologue is centered around one of the central characters of Alliances, which is the inventor, which is one of the first characters that we came up with with Stan, or that Stan came up with um, with us. Um, and it's just an incredibly interesting conceit that... You know, you look at this character and he's called the inventor. Of course, that's how Stan would name him, right? It's about, though, something so deep. It's about these creations that he makes. Um, and then we see at the street level, these inventions and the sort of, again, the chaos that ensues uh, come to earth in a trick of light, a new reality, which predate um, Orphan's uh, publishing wise. And the inventor kind of, he creates these amazing things um, and he doesn't, he doesn't really think through all the way that the uh, all the ways that these powerful tools can be used as weapons, um, or you know how they might 
in the case of orphans, destabilize the entire galaxy. You know, he's so sort of caught up in the moment of creation and the inspiration of creation that he doesn't consider the consequences of that act. Wow. And, yeah, and fu fundamental running through all of the Alliance's universe projects at the moment and probably moving forward for at least the near future is the central conceit that Stan asked um, of us in the beginning, which is what is more real, the reality um, that we were born into or the world we were born into or the one we create for ourselves. And it's this idea of kind of the tenuous nature of reality, which is thematically like, I mean, it's just incredible that, you know, we're still dealing... We're dealing with these issues in the headlines today. And, you know, Stan was asking these questions, I mean, beginning in, you know, the early 2000s with Luke, and then subsequently when we were going through the writing process. I mean, he's had this amazing ability to just look around the corner and say, like, this is thematically what this world is going to be dealing with moving into the future. And he did that in the 60s. And, you know, we're carrying that forward now in alliances. So we're wow. excited about it. It sounds like it was an amazing uh, experience to work with him, really. You know, a lot of times when you start a development process, you, uh, you have a very clear intention, like we're developing this to be a film or we're developing this to be a comic book or whatever. When we started developing Alliance with Stan, it was much, he didn't want to, he didn't want to start out sort of predetermining where this would live. He wanted to, it was more like a, it was more like d and D. I I mean, you were just sort of world building for the purposes of world building. And then once we had that uh, and we had materials and characters and, and um, you know, concepts and worlds and whatnot for it all, for that universe to live in, then we started looking around saying, okay, here's, here's where we can tell this story. Here's where we can tell this story. And here's how we can connect things together. And, you know, nobody's better than that. It's uh, than Stan is, was. And at the time he was also the most experienced storyteller in the world. At the time we were talking, I mean, he'd, you know, the hardest thing with him would, would be to create something that he hadn't heard before, right? Or, or you know, he used to say the hardest thing to do is, is to tell a story that hasn't already been told, or sure. to the extent that that's even possible, just telling a story in a way that it hasn't been told before. Um, so he's constantly challenging you. And he, he was always, that was his ability was to just create something that was genuinely original. Wow. You know, and, and, and when those moments happened, I think if you if you look back at uh, A Trick of Light, and you look at the afterward, we talk about one of those moments when he created Nia, who's a character in the prologue here. Yeah. And he created something that was truly original. And it was those kind of lightning in a bottle moments. And then you sort of capture that lightning in a bottle when you want to, you know, yeah. figure out what you can do with it. Right, right, right. And then uh, with or on Orphans, you got to work with two really extraordinary artists, Bill Sienkiewicz on the uh, introduction of the foreword, and then Simon Kodransky on the rest of the story. Tell me a little about like what they brought to the table and um, the differences with working with them. And um, yeah, I mean, I think this goes towards what Luke was saying about the Dungeons and Dragons world building with Stan is rooted in this idea that we're going to go find the best in class partners to work with if we're going to develop a new universe of characters. It, this had to be done in a way where we're kind of putting together a modern bullpen. And it's going to take a couple of years to do that. And, you know, it started with Dynamite because that's, you know, an incredible partner that Luke has been working with for many, many years and has a tremendous amount of trust and faith in both sides of that relationship. And then bringing in Bill and Sisman. I mean, that's like, an incredible duo because we have one on one side bill who is an absolute legend and you know as far as my nerddom goes and luke's nerddom goes i mean we were just like nerding out just like looking at old bill art thinking like is it ever possible that he could do the prologue that <laughs> rose Dan? like is that possible and then with this it's like then you've got this guy who's reinventing modern mythology with spawn visually and then taking it back and going to the classics like superman i mean this is like an amazing combo of artists and that's why for us if we we're going to introduce the visual language of alliances especially after having been in audio for so long and letting fans imagine what was going on we wanted to sort of have these two like pillars to you know develop and introduce these characters with so, so um when people see the prologue they're gonna you know that was an act of kind of pure imagination uh, with Stan. And so we needed an artist that had a really wild imagination. 
I mean, yeah. someone who would think of things we couldn't, you know, someone who would really have be able to put their own stamp on it and have some, you know, just be able to render the, the scale and the sort of power and the energy of this galactic part of the universe, which all takes place around the black, uh, a black hole and a quasar, um, somebody who could really do that justice. I mean, it's one of the last things we have uh, that Stan was, you know, directly a writer on. So we wanted to make sure that we we found someone who could translate the uh, the visuals, and that was Bill. And yeah. uh, I mean, he gave us something we just, you know, you you didn't you you couldn't expect it because there's no way to expect what Bill's going to give you. Yeah, he's because incredible. what he's going to give you is going to be so genuinely original. And with Sisman, what we found was somebody who, because the rest of that story continues to have this, you know, this kind of big ideas and, and some pretty abstract concepts. And, and what we found with Sisman was this ability to give us that scale, mm -hmm. but also find the characters and find some intimacy within the characters so that I mean, at the end of the Stan used to say, right, you could have uh, the biggest set pieces and whatnot in the world, but if people don't care about the character, then it's all just spectacle. It doesn't matter. And if you pe people care about the characters, they get hooked in, then they'll go on the journey with you. Right. So Sisman really helped us find those character moments and just the way he could just render an expression. You know, I mean, there were times where, where Sisman rendered an expression so well, we just went back and rewrote the dialogue to... Uh -huh his visual as opposed, as opposed to the other way around. It was like, oh, you know, he did better. And then we would just go back and rewrite that line of dialogue. Nice. You've already, obviously, as you said before, you've had a couple of alliances projects in the past. What made this one, Orphans, the right one to do as a graphic novel? The size and scale of it. This felt right for the medium because the scale that you're dealing with is so large. Yeah. And you want this in a visual medium. I mean, we did an, we did a, a series of audiobooks and we love them and we love allowing the uh, listener to envision things themselves. But some this story just screamed out to be told visually. Um, and once once we were able to you know figure out who the artists were going to be too, that that gave us confidence that the visuals would land and that it would really be well told by the artists and and that's that's sort of why this particular story it's not street level it blows up into space it just made sense to have it told in a visual medium but, and, and as fan and, and as fans that you know for luke and i and when we're talking to stan like you know first it, I didn't know Stan as, as long as Luke did. So I was brought in, you know, in a kind of sense of looking at this icon legend and then, you know, kind of being in awe as like a, a fan. But then when you get down to work, you realize that Stan is, was a fan of so many things. And he's just a fan of sci-fi serials and audio serials and, and you know, uh, these incredible ideas that came out of his brain you know, came from his fandom. And then you can share in those things. And one of the things we really wanted to do with this is to reintroduce Alliance's fans to Stan's earlier work and to really remind them that this is somebody who worked for two decades before he invented the Fantastic, co-created the Fantastic Four. Right. Two decades. Working in science fiction and romance and, you know, these different kinds of, these different kinds of genres inside of the comic book medium. Mm -hmm. So when we looked at Orphans, it has a very similar style and sensibility to those early sci-fi serials. So, you know, for us, it's like a nice continuum in trying to build within what's already an incredible library of material that Stan wrote, you know, between 1940 yeah, I mean, part and of the 1960. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason that the uh, prologue is re uh, is named a Traitor's Revenge is, right. is a callback to Stan's early work. Oh, right, right. Fantastic. You know, the book comes out mid October, and I know I'm sure you guys are wrapping it up. If not, it maybe you've already finished it. But are you thinking about the next thing or uh, contemplating? Okay. We 
we've done our part. I think it's in dynamite's hands now to get this <laughs> to get it wrapped up and off to the printer. I mean, the the story we have uh, a lot of development that so we sort of have our handbook of the stuff we've developed with Stan and the characters and whatnot. And so you know the rollout of it, which uh, Orphans is an important piece of, is something we're always we yes we 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 know where the next stories are gonna go. And in some level, Orphans sets up a line of a line of stories. Um, and it, you know, as you're building a universe, you're going to have certain sort of characters and their storylines, other characters and their storylines, and eventually they'll weave together. Right. Well, it sounds fantastic. I can't wait to read it. And if you are watching this video, please stop by your local comic shop and let the guy behind the counter know that you need a copy of this book as soon as you can get it. Uh, you can also, of course, order it from Amazon or uh, your local bookstore as well. But um, we like to support the local comic shops, you know. Yes, support the local comic shops. I, I, I mean, I grew up going to them. I know Ryan did too. And there's, yeah. uh, there's nothing like it. Rather, it's just there's a a real culture and a real sort of kinship and sense of community that you get at those local comic book shops, and they're invaluable to this business. Absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. We would we wouldn't have met if it wasn't for the local comic store, and then also mm -hmm. from their conventions. This is the, the yeah. community is what makes comic book collecting so important. Right. Very good. Well, guys, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it, and uh, yeah, we'll look forward to see what comes yeah. next as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah.